All right, chapter five, exercise one. So now we're, well, we've got this thing at the bottom here. Can go away. All right, let's do some functional analysis problems. So we're going to start with this one. My proofs are going to be pretty concrete, and I think there's going to be faster ways out there to do this, but whatever, my way does work. So first, we're going to recall that the norm on x cross x is given by um, x1, x2 is max of x1 and x2, where these norms are in the separate spaces, and that the one on k cross n is given by the norm of, um, let's say we have a lambda and an x, we set to the max of these two. Okay, so we're going to let x and y be an x, and lambda and k. Actually, let's do this, let's do this right here. Lambda and k, and epsilon greater than zero. Then the set u, which is just the ball of radius epsilon around x, product with the, pro the ball of radius epsilon over two about y, is a neighborhood of the point x, y. And if the pair st is in u, then the distance between x plus y and s plus t, uh, which is of course the map of addition. Um, by the way, I noticed I say um a lot in these videos, so um, 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 so, um, so, um, uh, multiplication is continuous and addition, we want to show that basically if you have f of x, uh, if you have this pair st in this neighborhood of xy, then f of xy minus f of st is less than epsilon. But here our f is just the addition function. And so that's what this is. So this is less than or equal to x plus s, y minus t, that's less than epsilon, because each one is in the ball of epsilon over 2. Thus, plus is continuous. For multiplication, I'm going to choose, this is the part where it's going to be really a lot more stuff than I think is necessary, but... Oh well, I like the argument. Delt, it, it's pretty explicit. Um, so we choose delta greater than zero such that delta is less than the minimum of epsilon and three times norm x plus one, three norm lambda plus one over three so that, why would I do this? We want delta squared divided by the product 3x plus 1, 3 lambda plus 1. We want this product to be, or this fraction to be less than delta over 3. Right. Because if, if delta is less than this thing on the right here, 
we definitely want delta to be less than epsilon because that's how we're going to get our estimate. Uh, we want the thing to be less than epsilon. But the thing on the right, we want to make sure that this epsilon is small enough so that we can do this argument because we're basically going to do an epsilon over 3 argument. But we have to replace epsilon with delta in order to be able to do this part of it. Let u be the ball of radius delta over 3 norm x plus 1 lambda product with the ball of radius delta over 3 lambda plus 1 x. So these are going to give us other factors of delta over 2 when we consider elements in these balls. And so that's where the 3 comes in, is that we want an epsilon over 3 argument, which here is a delta over 3 argument. And this plus 1 is just to be safe because we're not ruling out the scenario in which norm of x or norm of lambda are 0. Then u is an open neighborhood of lambda x in k cross y. So remember, we're looking at lambda in x and k cross y, and we want to consider another point in this neighborhood and show that it's close uh, with respect to multiplication. So this is the neighborhood of this in x cross y. And for any, we're going to call it alpha and y in u. Okay, yeah, I'm reusing this y, but we're not using y when we're talking about multiplication here, so I'm just going to reuse it and not freak out about it. So now we do an estimate. Lambda x minus alpha y. We add and subtract a mixed term. It has something from both. Then when we do the triangle inequality, we get this factor and the lambda comes out. Then we get the difference of the scalars and the y comes out. So the first thing here, we get a delta over 3. But the second thing, we can break up again and make this y minus x plus x. And this is less than or equal to delta over 3 plus, then we just do the triangle inequality again and we factor it out. y minus x plus lambda minus alpha times x. And let's see how much more space this takes. Oh, we also have to prove the reverse triangle inequality, so I'm going to need more space. I'll move it up here so that you can see the multiplication argument. So then this is less than or equal to base. Oh, also, all these less than or equal to's could probably be less than's, but I'm not going to make a fuss about it. So this delta over 3 stays. This thing in the middle is certainly less than, well, what are each of the component things less than? We've got this first part is less than 3 norm x plus 1, and the other thing is less than delta over 3 norm lambda plus 1. And then we have this other term uh, here, which is also less than delta over 3. And so now this is why we had to choose delta because we have this delta squared over this product is less than delta over 3, which is exactly what we need here. So this becomes less than or equal to, well, less than, but whatever, delta over 3. So this is less than or equal to delta, which by choice is less than or equal to epsilon. Hence, multiplication is continuous. That's, of course, scalar multiplication. As for continuity, we will first prove the reverse triangle inequality. If 
for all x and y and x. Here I'm renaming the variable so we don't have to worry about stuff. So this is certainly x minus y plus x minus y plus y. We triangle inequality this. So x, if you bring the y over, this is less than or equal to x minus y. Uh, there wasn't really anything special about x and y here, so by a symmetric argument, we have y minus x less than or equal to x minus y. Here, technically it would be y minus x, but because this whole thing is in the absolute value, we don't care. We can flip it around because norm of negative 1 is 1. And then hence... So what does this tell us? This tells us that this is less than or equal to this. This tells us that negative, wait a minute. Right, so if you put a negative here, you get negative x minus y is less than or equal to negative of this, which becomes positive x minus y. And then here, this is less than or equal to x minus y. But what does this mean by, just by definition? This is precisely saying that norm of y, well, doesn't matter, but norm of x minus norm of y, absolute value, is less than or equal to x minus y. So given epsilon greater than zero, uh, I should say the x first. It doesn't matter, but it's just a convention. So given x and x and epsilon greater than zero, for any y in the ball of radius epsilon around x, the difference between, the difference in uh, the positive real numbers of the images under the norm of these two points is less than or equal to the distance between the two points in the original space, which is less than epsilon. And hence, dot is continuous. Of course, this proof, like I said, we could probably improve it by making a much shorter argument in the scalar multiplication part, but this certainly does the trick, and so we're done.